Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to this one. I am doing this broadcast in English because I want it to be inclusive. The message does not need ring fencing. So share the message. Invite somebody. Let me spend a minute um, to invite two or so platforms to join this broadcast and then we will kick straight in. Whilst I am sharing the message, I implore you to share it too, to invite other people to listen. I hope it's inspirational. I hope it's thought provoking. I hope it makes you realize humanity. It makes you appreciate that we do not have a lot of time. Okay, bear with me. Adam, good morning. Good morning, Adam. How are you? I hope you are well. Adia, good morning. Good morning, bro. I hope everybody's well. I am hoping to keep this simple. I am hoping to provoke your thoughts this morning. In most places, it would be a Sunday morning. We are all getting ready. Uh, people are getting ready to worship. People are getting ready to spend time with family. And that is why I wanted to have this broadcast today, discussing this very issue. Okay, so over the last few, few days, over the last few days, I've had time to sit down and reflect. And as I've been reflecting, it's been a reflection on humanity those of you who know me and follow me realize that we went for a family funeral last weekend so obviously having gone for a family funeral you start thinking about a few things and i have followed that with a few discussions with friends this week and a few occurrences in my own family and network and it's just compelling to talk about this issue I want to talk about how we spend time with our families, how we spend time with people we love, how we create memories. I want to explain the reasons why Africans wail, Ghanaians wail, black people scream when somebody dies. It's usually born out of regret. It's usually born out of regret. Nanekwe Aredu, good morning, sis. Good morning, everybody. Only three names have popped up, and that's why I have only mentioned those three. Listen. People always say the African loves dead bodies. It's an unfortunate thing, but it's almost true. If not absolute truth, almost true. A person would be in, if somebody would live a very, very miserable life, there would be absolutely no help for this person. A person will struggle and the person will struggle alone. A person will live a difficult life with no support, no coping mechanisms offered by the people around them. Nobody cares. Nobody really gives a toss until the person dies until a person dies and when a person dies the phone calls begin the phone calls expressing shock and regret the phone calls trying to find some sort of connections and associations oh i just spoke to him three days ago oh i was praying to speak to him soon and you will find the people who actually spoke to them within the last few days they cry they wail they are upset but they are actually comforted by the last conversation they had with the person. The people who wail the loudest, the people who scream, the people who, they are inconsolable. And they are usually inconsolable, born out of pure regret. Regret that they never really bothered to speak to the person. Regret that when they had the inclination to speak to the person, they didn't. Regret that when they had the option to help the person, they didn't. Regret, regret is why we cry. And it's something we need to think about as a community. Maybe um, it's retribution for some of us. Maybe it will help other people avoid the situation in the first place. I've been awake. We've had a few incidents. I've not slept well, so you'd find my eyes are puffy and whatnot. But forgive that one. I didn't have time to go make up before the session. But I wanted the session to be raw. I wanted it to be... Uh, as powerful as it can be i wanted to provoke your thoughts so focus on that one and don't worry too much about what my face looks like listen we've had another incident this morning and when incidents happen you do get a lot of phone calls i was just listening to some of those phone calls and it just struck me the different tones of the two main groups of people who call the people who actually did have a relationship with the person and the people who want to project that they had a relationship with the person. The people who have a relationship with the person just call. They don't really say much. They just cry. They are upset. Their hearts are broken. They are devastated. 
by a person's illness or a person's exit or whatever the incident happens to be. Concern for the person is what they actually worry about. What is going to happen to the kids? What is going to happen? That group is different from, ah, oh, 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 I just spoke to him six months ago. Oh, oh Lord, yes, I wanted to speak to him last weekend. Oh, I saw him in the street. I wanted to cross the street to call him, but there was too much traffic. Ah! And they want to find all sorts of reasons, all sorts of explanations behind why they've never... Actually, if they never really offered the information about not speaking to them for the last six months, nobody would know. But it's the guilt. It's the guilt which pushes you to speak. So I have a question. Whilst I am here, whilst Amma, foolish Amma, is here talking to you, do I even know how you feel about me? Have I had time to tell you how I feel about you? Adie, let me tell you before you go to sleep. I am very grateful for the kind of support you offer me. I, I try to tell you as often as I can. Please understand it is very sincere. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact it's almost midnight and you are sat here watching my nonsense. Please go to sleep, bro. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, this will still be here. But God bless you. Your support means everything to me. Friends, Kadamin, good morning. Amanda, good morning, dear. Adrock Nedu, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Listen, as a group of people, we really need to change the way we interact with each other. We really need to modify our relationships. We really need to stop looking at material things as the only relationships we have with people. And we really need to stop making noise about people who died that we had no relationship with. And that's where I am going this morning. If you've not spoken to me in the last two years, don't come screaming when you hear I am ill. Definitely don't come give a performance when I'm gone. Because if it's possible for me to poke you in the eye, I will. I will. I sure will. If a person is not important to you whilst they live, why do you care what happens to the body afterwards? Why is it that most people troop to go to the mortuary to look at a dead body? People do go to the funeral to go to the wakekeeping to see a body when we do not see people. Martha Arena, good morning, sis. Why do we visit dead bodies? Why do we visit dead bodies and why do we not visit living people? Why do we pay monies through the nose to support a funeral when we do not pay to support a living person? You've known this person has been ill for quite a while. You've never stopped to visit. You've never stopped to speak to them. You've never supported them in any way. The minute the person passes, the question is, how much do we contribute to the funeral? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? I think we do those things because we've observed it in our community and we are just simply conforming. But it's a thought I want to challenge this morning. I be done, you. I want today to be a different day. I want you to spend your day differently. I want you to spend your day with the people who matter to you. I want you to physically spend time with them if it is possible. I am guilty of it. We are all guilty of it. But we can only try to make things better. I want today to be a kind of day where you call the people you love and you tell them that you do love them. Whilst they have ears to hear you. Even better, that you show the people you love that you actually do love them without any doubt whatsoever that the people who matter to you do know that they do matter to you when that happens when you spend time I, as i've shared this with a few people before this was a thought which actually struck me at my father's funeral in particular my father was a family man my father was a man who really did care about his extended family sometimes i actually thought that he cared about his extended family at the expense of his nuclear family as a child that was my thoughts that's my feeling and he was in everybody's issues he was trying to fix everybody he was here there he he was spending his time his resources trying to uh, integrate family blah 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 until well towards the end before my dad passed when people are old when people are infirm or when people do not have resources that they did before you actually begin to see the value of their interactions, the true value of their relationships. Some people will stand the test of time. They would always be there. They would always support it. They might not have a penny to give you, but they will swing by to say hi. They will send you a text message to say good morning, whatnot. A lot of people will elect to avoid you because you become a liability at that time. 
when they come to visit you they might have to give you a penny or two guy just says good morning when they come to see you they have to bring a present or two and those people who are not really genuinely into you would elect to avoid in those times so of course my dad was on pension he passed that 88 so he had been on pension for a while he was no longer popular with the people he was popular with for support reasons towards the end and i used to just chat to my dad about has such a body come to see you he's like no i heard he passed by and went to a village my house is right on the route but the person never said hi i'm like mm, have you learned a lesson or two he never really answered my question have you learned a lesson and he says they are still family right yeah. They are still family. They are still blood is what he used to say. They are still blood. I'm like, okay. Your attitude is completely different from my attitude. Bishop, good morning. Mami Okia Johnson, good morning. Guy says, good morning. Your attitude is completely different from my attitude. But for me, watching other people avoid my dad in that period actually did make me think, Lord, we are hypocrites. But that's a story for another time. My dad was not popular towards the end. Not at all. Good morning. Greetings, Bishop. Greetings. Excess grace I receive and return to you. God bless you. My dad was not popular, not by any stretch of the imagination, until the minute he passed. My dad was ill for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. He did have surgery in the hospital. He was unwell and it was unknown. When my dad was unwell, it was my siblings, myself, and a few very close, loyal family members who were interested. Very few people came to the hospital. My mom had had a stroke, but my mom was still there as the primary caregiver with my sister. Other people will swing by. They will see my mom doing whatever. They will greet. If you are lucky, they will swing by. Most of them did not swing by. Most of them did not really give a hoot what happened until the minute my dad passed. And when he passed, the body was still warm and we had troops of people asking. People wanted to understand property. People wanted to understand this. People wanted to understand that. People were wailing. People were screaming. Their only uncle. Oh my God. Ah. And it was in that episode that I understood the Ghanaian. At first, I thought it was hypocrisy. But I actually realized it's not just hypocrisy. It is so embedded, it's become our culture. We really don't care about people until they die. We really don't want to see people until they die. There were people driving long distances to come see the body. I'm like, if you don't come see the man, what do you want to see the body for? At this moment, it is a body. He will not smile, his usual smile, when you come to see him. He will say nothing clever to you when you come to see him. He will not pray for you. He will not bless you. When you come to see him, it is too late. It is too late. At that time, it was too late. The most profound of them all for me was this cousin who was so passionate at the point when the body was almost going to be moved uh, for burial. Don't turn my uncle. Don't turn my uncle. I don't want the body to turn. I turned around to him and I said, who cares? It's going to the ground. Who cares right now? If we put him upside down, if we put him sideways, if we stand him, who cares? It is too late to show passion at this time. It is too late. If you are hoping to make me think by doing this presentation that it, you cared about my dad, it really means nothing to me. It makes you look a hypocrite to me. It makes me lose the little respect I have for you. So please don't give a performance. Don't give a performance. It is insulting my intelligence and it makes me give, it gives me a perception about you. You do not want to create. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. But a lot of us, whether we realize it or not, do this at other people's funerals. You go to a place and you shed a few tears that you never shed for a living person. Do not shed tears for me when you don't cry for me as a living person. Don't come to my funeral if you've not come to see me as a living person. Don't ring my family members asking questions about where to lay me when you've not spoken to my family members about my welfare. Your phone call should be spent asking people how Amma is doing. How Amma is coping. How is life treating Amma? Good morning, Amma. How are you, Amma? And I will tell you myself. 
if you have positive things to say, please do say so whilst my ears work. Making noise, screaming in my absence, even when I am sleeping, is a waste of your time because I will not hear it and I will not thank you. I will not bless you for it. It is useless. So for those of you who have living parents, for those of you who have elderly people you love, for people who have living grandmothers, for people... These days, it's not even just the elderly. You just lost another family member, vibrant, young person, very young. Hasn't even hit the age of maturity yet. And it happens every single day. And I am guilty, just like everybody else. We get busy. We forget to touch base with people. We forget to check up on people. We assume that they should be fine. And if you assume that they are fine, if you are not that bothered to check on them, don't be that bothered to make noise over their dead body. It is fine if you don't care, but be sincere about it. It is fine if you haven't got time for me. Be sincere about it. You don't have time for my living body. Don't have time for my dead body either. Then that would be absolutely fine. But it's the pretense of making other people think that you had time for me. There were people who were telling stories at my dad's funeral from 30, 40 years ago. Hey, I used to sit with Doc and we drank this and we drank that. Samuel, good morning. And I would look at those people. I would turn to my little sister in particular and we would just shake our heads and look at the people. My night was good, Sam. I am awake, so it was a good night. Robert Amaku, good morning. Rita, good morning. Robert, good morning. Anna Uni, good morning. God bless you too, maybe Mensa. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm hoping this Sunday, I mean, traditionally, amongst the Ghanaian community, I don't know about the rest of the communities, but Sunday tends to be family time. Most people will get up and they will go to church. Most people after church will spend time with family, and that's what I'm hoping to draw your attention to. Today, make spending time with people you care about your priority, okay? Make contact with them, even if it's from a distance, okay? Alhaji Innocent, it is 7.20 a.m. where I am. There is nowhere to attend yet. No time. We just walk. I may attend. I don't know which of the things you are asking about. I am assuming attending means church. I may attend. But like I said, we've had a family incident, so I may end up going elsewhere. But we will see. <laughs> <laughs> if you owe me 10 cities and decide to offload two cities who still owes who <laughs> you've made a crooked man believe in his capabilities and a renewed lifestyle full of hope sometimes you make smile not knowing what you have turned me into oh god bless you adia good night good night yeah ima i, I am quite sad this morning it allowed you innocent it's not even church time we just woke up we just woke up, we just woke up, and we just woke up to a family incident. There's been quite a few of them, in fact. And so, on those occasions, you ponder, you reflect, you review, and if it's possible for you to improve practice, improve life as a result of those things you do. So yeah, this morning, I am quite upset. This morning, I am quite pensive. This morning, I'm very thoughtful. This morning, I wanted to challenge a thought system we don't seem to consider as Ghanaians. I don't know about anybody else. But we forget that people live. We forget that people live for a long time. Sometimes a person will die at 20, 25, and people are like, oh, they died so young. That's true. But how much of that time did you spend interacting with that person? Did you make any meaningful contribution to that person's life? Did you actually... Oh, Ima, personally, not much. We've had a few, like I said, there's a family member who's just passed. There's quite a few things that, that have happened. Uh, it's nothing unusual. It is just life. But when just life happens, sometimes it, it's, it's good to pause and to think and to wonder, am I actually making any impact with the life I am living? That's the conversation I'm having with myself this morning. Am I actually challenging anything whilst I'm here? Am I being sincere whilst I'm here? I am reviewing the quality of the interactions I have with people. 
And I've discovered as a group of people, we actually don't have quality interactions at all. At all. Our interactions tend to be superficial. We tend to spend time with people who have. They are the ones who don't need your time. We spend time with people who have crowds around them. Those people don't need additional people. We don't tend to spend time with the ill, with the infirm, with the poor. Those are the people who need your time. Aziz, good morning. The people who are ill are the ones you should visit, not their dead bodies. The people who are old are the ones you should spend time with and cuddle, not when they are dead. The people who are ill, the people who are poor are the ones you donate money to. Giving money to an actress, giving money to somebody who's already established is not the same impact as giving money to a hungry soul. Giving money to somebody and making it have a difference, an actual impact on a person's life is what we need to be looking at. We need to make an impact with our donations and our gifts. Good morning, Aziz. Good morning, Andrews. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, DJ Constalo Constalo. I hope you are well. I am all right. I am good. I am just pensive. I am thoughtful. I am reviewing my interactions this morning for sure. So those of you who are my personal friends, you will see a lot of interesting messages and text messages and declarations from me over time. That is my way of telling you, you know, whilst you are here, I have things to say to you. Your ears better hear it. If I have something to give you, I would want to give it to you whilst your eyes can see it. Spend a lot of good morning. Joseph, good morning. Good morning. We are good. We are good by grace. Give to people what you have when they can see and appreciate. Talk to people whilst they have ears and they still have a breath. Impact people's lives whilst you are capable of doing it. Don't wait. Don't wait until it is too little, too late to exhibit your love. Because when you do that, it is just a performance. As I said, at the minute when my dad was lowered, the people who had been in the trenches with me fighting, the people who had been with me uh, entertaining him, keeping his body and soul together, the ones who had seen him ill, we had wept our tears already. We were spent by the time um, the body was lowered. There was no dramatic wailing. There was no dramatic screaming. There was nothing. It was peace. It was, it is done. The fight is over. It is done. And the ones who had actually made meaningful contributions in their heart of hearts knew that there was no need to express any other sentiments. There was no need for me to explain to any people Anybody else that I had done my best, I felt the person who needed to see me try my best had already seen me try my best. And there was no need to scream, to wail. But you should have heard the orchestra of the other group. The ones throwing themselves on the floor, the ones who were screaming like wounded animals. And they were doing that because they knew that they had failed him. They knew that they had not been fair to him. They knew that they had abandoned him. They did not want to look bad in front of people. They wanted other people to think that they cared about the man, but they did not give a hoot. And it was very obvious. It was well known to those of us around him anyway. When you do that, you look a hypocrite. And when you look a hypocrite, it's difficult to respect you. Or say, yes, it's true, Emmanuel, we wait for the person to die and come give false testimony. I am telling you, it is a very sad incident. We have a lot of things to say about a lot of people. And so these days when you go to a funeral and you listen to the things people say about the dead, you laugh your head off because most of it is so untrue. Most of it is so false. Most of it is so disrespectful. Whilst the person lived, you all call them names. And then the minute they fall, you have lovely stories to tell. No, I think those things need to be sincere. You need to be sincere. And those things need to be told living people whilst they live. So call your mother this morning, the way I am about to do with mine, and say to her, you are the center of my universe because you made yourself the center of my universe. You have been my cheerleader extraordinaire. Blah, 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 blah. Pray for her. Thank her while she still has ears. I am not calling my dad this morning. He can't hear me. 
I can scream till the end of the universe. My dad will not hear me. He's not here. All the citations and all the things we do right now is to help comfort me and to help me feel better. But in a real sense, it is a waste of my time because the person who needed to hear and my dad had this funny smile on his face every time he said things he appreciated. That smile will never be here now if I make pronouncements. It is late. It is too late. It is not too late for me and my mom, so I'm hoping to rectify that. It is not too late for me and some of my family members, so it is. There are some of you, after the funeral, I haven't even bothered speaking to. Uh, I feel a conviction that we need to uh, make amends. We might not be friends, but we might as well just clear the air because I might come to your funeral to give a performance or you might come to mine to give a performance which will make both of us hypocrites. So I will call some of you and I will have a simple conversation of let's move forward, let's move on. That's what I'm hoping to um, interest some of you to look into. Uh, Spend Love says, hmm, mm-hmm. It is a sad existence. It is a sad reality in our community. We really don't care about each other, but we, we perform. We want other people to think we care about you. You might be sick for a long time and I will never call. I will never come to see you. I will never come to visit. But the minute I hear the sad news, ooh, the waterworks will be on. I want today to be one of those days when you sit down for a second and you think, treat living people well. Write lovely things about living people and send it to the living people themselves. Write write everything you would like to say at my funeral and send it to me whilst I can read it. Make an audio for me whilst I can view it. Send it to me now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Send it to your mother now. Don't wait until the person is going to manufacture long grammatical expressions at a person's funeral in English language when the villagers in your village do not speak English. It's a waste of your time. Printing it in a beautiful brochure is meaningless because all the people do when they take the brochure is to take the picture. That's it. They only care about the picture. The lovely things you want to see about your mother is lost because you did not tell the person when the person was here. It's better to appreciate people whilst they are alive. We don't do as much as Africans. It's awful. It really is awful. It really is awful. I wanted to do this in English because I wanted to reach a group of people. I was talking to somebody who is not um, Ghanaian about this thing. And like this morning, I, I woke up maybe four or five hours ago, maybe. I woke up and then once I woke up of my accord, um, a phone call came, somebody's passed again and there is drama as usual. Uh, big funerals, they do something. say, please don't have a big funeral. I, I keep saying to my kids, don't have a big funeral for me. Have a big birthday bash for me. Actually, don't invite other people. Take me to dinner. Take me to the cinema. Watch a film with me. Cuddle up with me on a sofa. Massage my back. Massage my back. It means the world to me. The big performance for me. Inviting other people to my 60th birthday. Mm, it will be nice, but it will not mean much. Come and spend 30 minutes in my bed on my 60th birthday and read and answer stories to me. <laughs> read and answer stories with me. That would be more impactful. Take me to an African restaurant and eat banku with me, with your children and my grandchildren. That will mean an awful lot to me. Don't worry too much about spending my, uh, my friend's mom. She doesn't speak to the mom. She just sends mom her monthly remittance without fail. The remittance comes, it comes on time, and it is a very generous uh, contribution to this woman's budget. But I was talking to the woman and she says, Listen, catch it on down for the how much she brings to me on a monthly basis. I want her to deduct 20 pounds from that. I want her to use those 20 pounds to buy a phone card. And I want her to call me, not every day, but once a week. Once a week, every Sunday afternoon. Just call me. Good morning, mom. How are you? Is everything okay? That's it. It doesn't even have to be long. I just want to hear her voice. I just want to hear her voice. And you know, that's the reality for a lot of our parents and for the elderly in our community. A lot of them are isolated. A lot of them are depressed. 
a lot of them don't even get people to speak to. You see why your mom is always running to her hometown. When she goes to her hometown, people greet her. I was talking to an elderly lady I love dearly. And I was sharing this story with her. There's a friend who says um, she counted a whole month. The people who spoke to her for the whole month since she's been on pension were less than 20. She spoke to less than 20 people in a whole month. Some, my eyes are puffy because I didn't sleep. I woke up quite early. I couldn't sleep for some reason. It was only later on in the morning when the phone call came that I realized why I was awake. But I've been awake for a while. That's why my eyes are puffy. No, I've not been crying. <laughs> my eyes are puffy because I've not had enough sleep. I have not slept well for quite a few days. I have been exhibiting, so I've been getting up in the morning quite early to go and exhibit. And I've been on my feet for quite a while during the day, so I'm exhausted. That's why my face is puffy. See? I am fine, but I've got puffy eyes because I've not slept enough. But I want, I, I just want to challenge your thoughts, please. If there's an elderly person in your life, an elderly person in your area, do you know that this person might not speak to up to 20 people in a whole month? When I think of that one as Amma, it, it scares the life out of me because I feed off talking to people. I feed off human interactions. I feed off expressing myself and listening to other people express themselves. So I can't imagine not having 20 people to talk to. And since I understood that, I understood my parents. I remember my mom, my mom, not as much as my dad. My dad wanted to go to his hometown every weekend. It didn't matter whose funeral it was. He was right there. It didn't matter whose engagement it was. He was right there. Monica, good morning. Good morning, Sam. Bless you too, Ransford. It did not matter what the occasion was. My dad was right there. He was dancing at every event. It wasn't until I spoke to this person that I realized a lot of our pensioners are lonely. A lot of our pensioners are isolated. Sister Pat, I am so scared you have no idea. It, it scares the living light out of me that there might be a time in my life when for a whole month I will sit down. And she actually did write it. Everybody who spoke to her, everybody who came to see her, everybody who interacted with her over a period of a month, there were only 17 people who spoke to her. 17 people made contact with her the whole month. The whole month. How sad is that? How scary is that? How isolating would that be? And if I think that that might happen to me in my life, it just gives me goosebumps. It gives me goosebumps. And that's why some old people become CNN because there's nothing else to do. Alexandra, good morning, sis. I am very good, Monica. I hope you are too. It is very sad. It is very scary. But if we don't want that to be the reality for us, we need to change that trend whilst we can. Make it a point to visit an old person you know. You can't go to visit them. It's okay. Give them a phone call. You know, even your text message does count as contact. WhatsApp them. Send them stupid videos. Let them laugh their heads off. Let them know that you're thinking about them. It means the world to people who are struggling to engage with society. It means the world to somebody who is a societal misfit if you shake their hands, if you give them a hug, if you speak to them, if you send them a message. Asume sisi o chiao is how we normally do it. It means Asumesi is thinking of you. Somebody has actually thought of you. You are not as insignificant as you were beginning to feel. You are not as useless as you think you are. It is wonderful to know that another person thinks about you. And sometimes you don't even need to speak to the person. It's just passing on a message. I am thinking about you. Ni, good morning. Welcome. So today, I want today and your normal schedule to be challenged a little bit. I want you to spend today telling people who've made an impact to your life. Telling them the impact they have actually made to your life. Thanking them whilst they can hear you and they can see you. If you have a gift for somebody, send it to them whilst they still have breath. If you want to change somebody's life, change it whilst you can. 
if you want to impact somebody, if you want to teach somebody, teach them whilst they need lessons. You know, I have quite a, a lot to tell you on this topic. I'm hoping that I am able to edit it. I am able to uh, depersonalize it so that certain people don't take it personally because I've been having these conversations with people. You see that nephew of yours, your niece, the one you don't particularly care about because at the moment you are assuming that you might have to help with school fees and whatnot. Yeah, it's a liability, I know. I know it's a liability. I know most of us will not go there. Judy, good morning, sis. How are you? If you are not interested in knowing me, and I've had this conversation so many times, please understand I am not referencing a particular one, but I've had this with so many people. Since I started talking on Facebook, when people work out who I am, people will send me, I am your uncle. I'm like, hi, uncle. I am your auntie. Hi, auntie. Two weeks later, oh, why are you not getting back to me? Why are you not? Your answers are yes. They are monosyllabic. My answers are monosyllabic because I actually don't know you. My answers are not as exhaustive as you'd like it to be because you are actually making, you are trying to establish a relationship too little, too late. You think that I have become something and I actually haven't become, and there are some of you that have sent messages and I've told you I am still the same useless woman. I haven't done anything. My business hasn't even done well. My business is ba uh, near bankrupt. Understand that there is no value to me right now. I haven't improved in any way. The way I was is the way I still am. So just so you understand and you are not thinking that you make, you form in a relationship with an important person. I am not. But it would have been so much better for those people to reach out to me a few years ago when I was in the trenches digging. It would have made it would have meant more to me at that time when if people had made a connection with me when i wanted a mentor when i needed mentors when i needed to see giants in my family to inspire me if those people had made inspirations of themselves for me those people would have built a relationship with me if you have a niece and you have a nephew and you are looking to have a relationship with them don't wait until they turn 18. Don't wait until they become adults. They are independent and you think they are no longer liabilities because it will be very difficult to establish a relationship at that time. Whilst I am here, whilst I need people, whilst I, it would be nice to have inspiration, even if it is not financial, get in touch with me and develop a relationship with me if you can. If you can't, if it doesn't work out, then we might have to elect to pass at some point. I know many people who have, have shared similar testimonies with me. Now that people think that I am okay, everybody wants to be my family member. When you do that, the person is very unlikely to want to have a relationship with you. So today, I want you to spend this day looking at your interactions. I want you to find those interactions that you should have done better with. And if there is still time, I want you to rectify those mistakes. I want you to spend today writing messages to living humans. I want you to spend today speaking to living humans. I want you to spend today celebrating living humans, visiting living humans, inspiring living humans, not writing publications behind people when they have exited. Greet living human beings. Spend quality time with them. Gift to living humans, especially the ones who need your gift. Stop giving your gifts just to the rich and the famous. Don't celebrate people who are already celebrated. Celebrate the ones who are struggling to find champions. Celebrate the ones who are struggling to find inspiration. Celebrate the ones whose life will be transformed by your little utterance, by your simple message. Greet the people who are struggling to find 20 people a month to greet them. That is where your greetings have the greatest impact. Amen, Sadiq. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So this morning, on a Sunday, whilst you are preparing to worship the Lord, whilst you are preparing to meet brethren, whilst you are preparing to spend time with the people who are near and dear, let me remind you of a simple thing. 
if you don't go visiting a person when they are ill, don't visit them when they are dead. If you don't contribute to my survival, don't contribute to my funeral. If you don't write messages professing your love to me whilst I can read, don't send it to my funeral. If you don't build a relationship with me whilst I need relationships, don't come calling when you think I am established. If you don't remember me when I am nobody, don't come calling when you think I am becoming something. Kwabna Jima, good morning. Good morning, Kwabna. Good morning, Chris. If you don't come calling when I am wailing, don't come when I'm smiling. Don't send me cars when I've already got some. It means nothing to me at that point. Give me a ride in your car whilst I am walking. If you want to inspire me, inspire me whilst I am in the trenches. That is when I am open to invite, I'm inviting inspiration. That's when I'm open to inspiration. Don't inspire me when I'm already made. Don't advise me when I'm already on a good course. Advise me when I'm lost. Advise me before I find my way. Good morning, Chrissy Apia. You want to establish me? Establish me now. Don't wait until I'm done before you want to establish. It will be too little, too late. So this morning, I wanted to do it this morning because I wanted to hit people before you started your day. I wanted this message to be there whilst you are interacting with people. I want you to remember the people that you love, the people that you've abandoned because you are busy, the people who are no longer fashionable that you don't visit. And I want you to reconsider those choices today. And that's the purpose of this broadcast. I wanted to challenge the way you spend your day today. I wanted to challenge how you interact with people today. I want you to tell people what you have to tell them whilst they can still hear you. I want you to show love to people who can still see and appreciate it. Yesterday was a Saturday. We would have all gone to funerals to perform. We would all have been there. We would have had uh, opportunities to go and express love to people who are not here. What I'm trying to say this morning on this Sunday is that we change the pattern this week, that we spend time with the people who are alive, that we spend time with the people who need time, that we spend our resources developing people and saving people, preventing the death in the first place. This week, I have had a huge fallout with somebody. Well, I don't know why this is also making such a big comeback. Well, not comeback. It's a big deal in our community at the moment. Kidney failure. Kidney failure is becoming a big deal. It's because we don't watch what we eat. It's because we don't understand the things that kill us. The things which make us feel affluent are the things which are killing us. So a lot of us in our quest to show affluence are buying things that kill us. So kidney failure is a very common thing in Ghana right now. So there's a young person uh, who is a family connection who had a kidney disease, needed a dialysis, could not fund dialysis because the money is not forthcoming. Um, this person soldiered on and eventually passed. They couldn't mobilize money to give this person dialysis. They could not mobilize money to send this person to India for treatment. Needed a kidney transplant. All that was not done. People were still trying to mobilize funds when the person died. Okay. I mean, sometimes we don't have money. Sometimes we just don't have it. No matter how uh, good-willed you are. I understand that. What annoyed me is the ease with which we could raise money to have a funeral. The kind of donations people sent for the funeral. The kind of volunteers we got to pay for this and to pay for that and to sponsor this. I'm asking why did you not sponsor to keep a person who did have to It's not that you don't have it. It is that you don't really care to intervene when I need it. 
you had the money all along or you could have had access to the money if you wanted to the money may not have been disposable but you have found a way to get the money when it was time for a funeral why can't you make the money why can't you put the same effort in in trying to save me so if you have a family member that you are likely to contribute to their funeral I suggest that you are likely to contribute to their upkeep today. I pray that you are likely to contribute to their enjoyment of today. I pray that you are likely to improve the quality of their life today. I pray that you feel inspired to save them today. Save the living. They are the ones worth saving. Performing at the funeral is a meaningless exercise and that's all i want to say today let me leave you here this morning i would have a few other broadcasts coming up but for this particular one this is where i would like to leave it i wanted to provoke your thoughts i wanted to challenge your actions i wanted to inspire you i wanted to move your thinking and i want you to share the message invite other people to watch other people to also have their thoughts challenged if more people god bless you too judy if more people made the conscious choice to treat other people better, we will all have a better experience. Papa, good morning. God bless you too, Martha. I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to challenge you. Yes, I wanted to do it in English because I wanted it to be inclusive. I know the Ghanaian gang prefer to do a language, but this is not a, an issue which requires ring fencing. So this one should be done open access so anybody could appreciate it. Share the video for me. Tell other people about it. Translate it in your local dialect for me and tell people, as living human beings, we need to treat each other well. As living human beings, we need to support each other. We need to champion each other. We need to project each other positively. We need to stop bite, uh, backbiting. We really need to stop that because we forget our differences when a person dies. What is the point? in fighting whilst the person live. Ahmad, good morning. How are you, my brother? I hope you are well. So this day, I pray for you that the Lord changes your thought process. I pray that the Lord challenges the way you interact with people. I pray that the Lord makes you a kinder person today, that the Lord helps you to affect other people positively. That today you make yourself an inspiration for a younger person or a needy person in your life. That today you realize that God doesn't come to serve his people. He serves his people through each other. Today you can be a tool through which God blesses somebody. And I'm praying, precious Anna Gold, good morning. I am praying today that you make yourself that vessel through whom God changes somebody's life, through whom God's love is expressed to another person. Call somebody, inspire somebody, bless somebody, tell somebody that God loves them. Let somebody know that God loves them. Let somebody experience God's love practically today. Eat with people, invite people to eat your food because you will not be able to finish it all by yourself anyway. Buy food for people who look hungry. Don't invite people who are already fed to your table. Support people who need support. Don't invite the already celebrated to be celebrated. They already have it done. They don't need reinforcement. That is what I want to leave with you today. Make sure your life has had a positive impact on a few other lives today inspire somebody do something new and make this place a better place for all of us because unbeknown to you each one of us has our own struggles that's the basis of life it takes people uh, watching closely it takes people identifying our various needs for some people it's monetary for some people it is as simple as hearing the voice of a living human being there are many people this day who will not interact with another human being the whole day. There are many sick people who are in bed and will not be able to get up and speak to people. If they see people, it will just be at meal times when the person comes to feed them and that is done. We need more as human beings. We need more interactions as human beings. Visit somebody. Visit the poor today. Visit the old. Visit the ill if you can. 
spend time with the people you love and even with random people you don't know because that could be the difference between life and death for some people on a daily basis let me pray for you and i pray that you pray for me and wish me well but as i said if you can't say it to my face don't say it at my funeral if you can't gift it to me whilst i live don't donate it for my funeral if you can't bless me whilst I live, don't bless my dead body. It is useless. It is pointless. Have a blessed day. Speak to you later.